Hello, YouTube, if this ever goes anywhere. Uh, we are running a 5e conversion of Spelljammer. And this is our party. Um, Salutations, I'm Slingy. Oh, mechanic. I am a careless cat. A teensy. Tabaxi. Tabaxi. Whatever. I'm a hairless cat in space. I'm cold. Alright, uh, <laughs> Mr. Aviators, I guess, would be the next one to go. This is your captain speaking. My name is Captain Anna, and I am a half orc. Alright. And then, uh, Ben. Yeah, so, um, my name is Altair. Um, I'm on a vessel with a bunch of ruffians, and, um, I don't really know why I'm here, but, um, there, there I am. One minute I'm a scholar, and the next minute I'm a cutthroat. What do you know? <laughs> Alright, excellent. Nancy? Rex, Ulf Ranger here. Concise, I love it. Uh, Ian. J.K. Talonguard III, Helmsman. I'm a warforged. I was built to fight, so I fight. But I like to steal stuff, too. And he flies. And I fly, but I also fall. <laughs> yes, and yeah. Um, and I'm, I am the dungeon <laughs> mistress, Maddie, playing literally everyone else. And you guys... The part of the world today will be played by... Me. So, you guys arrive at your uh, little pirate paradise in space, built on an asteroid, uh, run by the pirate queen, Roshin Dove, after having recently acquired spoils from a dwarven merchant vessel. Um, you pull into port, there's uh, the... Uh, Mechanic, the ship shop, right there at the uh, dock as you pull in for any repairs to be done. Otherwise, the uh, the asteroid is yours. All right. What do we want to do? Well, I say we turn in our. Didn't we get a tip on some bounty while we were out? Uh, no, uh, I think if anything, the bounty would be on us. <laughs> Fair. But, uh, we collected a bunch of stuff from that ship. Yes, yeah. We uh, raided a merchant ship and we took their stuff and we're at a place run by pirates, so guaranteed there's going to be someone here to fence things for us. Yes, uh, I suggest we go to the Black Flag Market. That sounds reasonable. Yes. Sounds like a fine idea mechanic. Yes, why don't we go tell our counterfeit goods, of course. Counterfeit? Huh. Yeah, that's definitely... No, they're certainly real. <laughs> they're just not ours. Well, actually, um, they, they are. are. So, everyone's going to the Black Flag Market? Yep. yep. Indeed. Okay. So... At the market, there are many, many shops. Um, your first stop, I guess, would be to a uh, very long-bearded fellow with a bandana, who's the uh, the fence. His um, his stall is only a simple counter with a chest full of gold. Whereas everyone else is selling items and uh, potions, ship objects, you know, whatnot. His, his is the uh, spot where you would go to trade it in. Do you know his name? Yep, you, you would know his name. And his name is Jim... John the Pirate. So is that Jim? Yeah, Jim. 
Jim John the Pirate. Former Pirate. Pirate. I like him. Ah, the name, yes. The name, the name stuck, though. <laughs> Jimmy John, he, oh. he fences your goods freaky fast. So he lives in a pirate town, and yet he feels the need to have the moniker The Pirate. The pirate. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. Just so you know who you're messing with. Fair enough. Altair is gonna just walk casually up to the counter, trying to act cool even though he has no idea what he's doing. Be like, Hello, my good sir! And talking very, like, formally to, uh, you know, a cutthroat. He's like, We have some goods that we definitely acquired by legal means, and, uh, we were wondering if you would like to take them off of our hands for an exchange of money. I hop up onto the counter. Excuse me, my companions a bit. Stiffy, stuffy, you know. Yeah. And then we I get some walk. stuff. You want to buy it? So this this would be the face that you're looking at. <laughs> then I would hop up onto the counter like a cat and like. Oh. Hey, Jimmy. It's been a while. Just all these people surrounding. Oh, he oh, is he is a man of beauty. Lovely. He is a man of great beauty. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Beautiful bandana you've got today. What have you got for me? He says to you, just, what have you got for me? Oh, we have all kinds of deliciousness. Delicious. What delicious kind of deliciousness, deliciousness do we have? Um, you've got various stuff. crates full of, um, like, just bricks of, like, solid, uh, iron. Yeah, that would make sense. Here we have the finest raw materials processed by none other than truly expert dwarven craftsmen, which we acquired by completely fair means. We've got boxes. They're closed. It's double if you want to open them first. Well, I have to inspect the product. Can't sell That'll what we have. And he, um, he calls for a couple of guys, and they, uh, they come over, sort of, you know, and one of them takes a crowbar and opens the, uh, crate, one of the crates that you laid out, and these are, in fact, iron ingots. Ingots are when you've already made them into a bar, right? Yeah, yeah. they're just, like, the bars of solid material. Yeah. They melt, so put them they in are, in fact, stuff. iron ingots... Stamped with the seal of a prominent dwarven mining company. See, nothing but the finest. Just like I promised. See? Totally delicious. But we need it. All this could be yours for not but a small city. Well, <laughs> um, just... He looks it over and says... I'll give you 500 gold for the lot. 500 gold? We paid nearly twice that much. Well, we kind of did. Yeah, but you see the seal here. It's going to take a bit to get that off, and that requires resources. But we almost lost a crewmate. That's not my problem. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Jimmy, buddy, ow! Oh. I'm gonna help you in. Rolling up a swage and shaft. Persuade the guy that looks like he's just like. constantly raging. He's completely done with your shit. <laughs> oh. As hard and rough as this guy's exterior is. You're, most people wouldn't think you're a cute kitty. You're you're a wrinkly, hairless monstrosity. However, this guy seems to have a soft spot in his heart for the ugly animals that nobody else likes. And looks at you, looks at the ground, tries to tries very hard to avoid agreeing to anything, and says, "All right, best I can do is seven fifty. Thank you, Jimmy. I think we have a deal. 
That sounds like a deal. Alright, so you're at the shops and you've just been given 750 gold to split between the five of you. I will be the treasurer of the boats, the ship, because I... Yeah, 150 gold apiece. Yes. Or we could have it all given to Matt. Max, but, uh... Yeah, we could put it in just the ship's treasury and, uh, you yes. know. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. I am the ship treasurer, as well as the mechanic. So I will need a handout just for uh, treasury. All right. I think we discussed this before. Our healing options are somewhat limited. Um, in the so, PC resources section <clears throat> so just as a precaution um especially being the captain you know i feel responsible for my crew so i would like to purchase a healer's kit all right if there is one of those available somewhere i'm assuming they have first aid supplies well there is a <clears throat> shop that sells potions um Let me pull up my market map here. Yeah, there's a general goods uh, store that would probably have a few of those. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I want to see um, if they have any pros. You know, like a, a nice big swatch of the. Right. Um. So. Why are you dressed like a sand people? No, I need a comfy bed. Okay, so you're, you're so you're so you're sticking with the sand people look. Well, you know, it might be nice to have some warmer clothing. Mm-hmm. You're right. All right, but let's go clothing shopping as well. Today, I trust your judgment. Okay, um, the, there's a, uh, a kobold at one of the, uh, one of the stalls that sells general goods for the ship. Mostly things like, um, like weaponry, you know, ballista bolts, cannonballs, uh, some rope, um, Yes. Can we see? Can we see? The, wait a minute. General quick repair supplies that you'd need in the middle of space when you can't get to a mechanic. Um, and they have first aid kits. Uh, How much ammunition do we have? Where is that track? I'd say you start out with a, a good. What? 20 is usually the right amount to start with for arrows, so. Right. We'll go with that. Would that would take up a considerable amount of space on the ship? Yeah, I mean they're not small, so yeah, they're the size of well, a yeah, sphere. That's probably a comfy upper limit. Yeah. So yeah. Also, you started with ten ballista bolts and ten harpoons. You used one harpoon and what, like three yeah. ballista uh, shots. Mm-hmm. What was it? Three? Okay. In the unaired uh, pilot episode. So. um... I think we still have a pretty healthy stock then if we've only used one harpoon and, and three ballistas. So you'd have still seven ballista good. bolts and about nine, nine harpoons. Nine harpoons, yeah. Right. I would, I I would double up. That in the hmm? I'd double up on the bolts. But. Yeah, the normal bolts. So we yeah, we're probably going to go through those more than the harpoons, so. Yeah. Yeah, if we have I mean, space you, you for it. you got to figure, maybe you get in two fights, and if you can't survive in, in ten bolts a fight, like, you, you're you probably doomed by the time you can fire that many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was saying, I mean, we probably want maybe like 15 of those. I don't think we need 20 necessarily. Um, so yeah, if we could find a place to buy another like eight... So, um, normal ballista bolts. 
as you can see, I've moved you real quick to the deck of your ship now that I've replaced it with something I can use for free. Excellent. That is uh, very nice. So that, I like it. It's got eyeballs. Yeah. I think it's, it's actually cool. It's still a damn yeah. fly. It's it, looks, it looks fantastic. Yes, it does. I love how it looks. It manages to look like a ship and an insect at the same time. Which is fantastic. So, as a point of reference, a ballista bolt is an appropriate size to also be used as a spear. Yeah. Alright, so about like, yeah, five to six, maybe seven feet long. <clears throat> but, you know, no more than probably like that big around. So if you had them all like. If you had like, if you could imagine like a spear rack, um, probably then... beside the ballista. Yep. So you could probably contain like, I mean, within a five by five area, you could definitely hold like at least twenty of the things. So I would say maybe for. All that we have, we'd probably be able to probably only take up like another two squares next to the ballista. Okay. I'm not. I'm not putting them on the map. I'm just showing you the yeah. capacity. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually a slightly larger scale than I was imagining for our uh, our ship. To be completely honest, but yeah, that, we should have more than enough room for. Now there's only two decks, an upper, an upper and a lower. Yep. So, I see we have the biggest ship. Yeah, pirates generally don't have large ships. Yeah, because we want to be nimble and quick. Yeah. Well, no. and it's difficult to overpower a big ship. Yeah, as, as far as... Uh, mm -hmm. As far as firepower goes, I would say yours is kind of underwhelming than the, you know, average pirate ship, but... But most people don't assume that we're a pirate ship. No. Which gives us an advantage. So, we are going to need... How much of a uh, ballista box? Um, it would be about one gold per uh, spear. Okay, so then... Maybe another eight gold. Yeah. We'll get eight more. There's like 15. And that'll put us at 742. Is there any markup on uh, basic items or basically oh, items? Oh, in yes. In, in, yeah. this, in this area, in this spot, of the uh, solar system, there is an extreme markup because this is where you can get things that you're not allowed to buy other places, and this is also a place where you can safely dock without being arrested. Yep. Um, I mean, safe being, you know. How much of a markup? Um, pretty much 50%. 50%? Alright. So, one of those um, healers kits that I was looking into, those are like 5 gold, so would you say 7 uh, seven gold and 5 silver, probably? Yeah. Alright, yeah, I'll just buy one of those from my personal stocks. Um, oh. would they have any folks? Um, make a, make an investigation check. You know, they wouldn't normally have any furs. It's it's very rare that anyone comes through here with them, but you do happen to find a, a stack of uh, dire wolf furs on the, uh, flopped over a barrel where the kobold is selling ship equipment. How much for those? Mm -hmm. 
And don't try to cheat me because very few people actually want the perks. The, 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 this small kobold, tiny, tiny dragon fellow sitting there looks up at you and goes, Ten gold! Yeah! There's a stack of about f five. Alright. Let's have some deal. And I just smile, or big toothy kitty grin. Mm-hmm. Alright, he, he takes your gold and goes, mm, Shinies! And puts them away and squirrels underneath the table. You, you get the roll insight, just for fun. Pretty good. He, you get the sense that he doesn't actually get a lot of business, and he, uh, he's just excited to have made a sale. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, um, healer's kit acquired. Um, yep. yep. Furs, ballista bolts. Anything else at the market? Um, well, I'm thinking, you know, being pirates and all that, at some point we might need to falsify some documentation, um, Is anyone which, uh, a fortress kit? I do not have the materials on me, but I do have proficiency in it, um, but considering the markup and everything, I think I'm going to have to dip into our, uh, ship, uh, That's ship resources, because I think those are somewhat expensive. Yes. Uh, let me look and up how much of that. That we dip into the general uh, financials because that <sighs> is technically for the ship. Okay, they are 15 gold pieces, so that'd be 22 and a half. So 22 two gold two and 5 pieces. silver. So we'll get 2 or 44 even. Uh, it would be 45 even 45 if you were getting to them. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, I, I don't think it says anything about, like, them having a limit to how many uses. Like, it doesn't list, like, how many times you're able to use them. So, I don't know if you really... It's always better to have a backup. Fair enough. Yeah, so if we want to get, like, two and then, like... I'll keep one on my person, and we can store another one somewhere on the ship. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So you're getting forgeries kit or forgery kits? Yes. Yep. Oh, we should ask the cook mm -hmm. if she needs anything. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah, that probably the good cook idea. is. is Actually wandering around, just sort of amazed at where she is. She's she's a little old halfling woman. You get the sense she's never been to a pirate um, meteor. No, not meteor. Asteroid uh, island. Um, and she's like, my, this is my overwhelmed. Um, her name was Hattie. Yeah, Hattie. Uh are there any ingredients that you need? I, um... I make some really good, uh, mashed taters, and, uh... If you could, if you could get me some bacon, I could do you up something really nice with it. Alright, anything else? Do we need to fully stop the kitchen for you? Uh, yes, oh, that would help very much, thank you. Oh, okay, um, I pull out a small sheet of paper and kind of scribble on it and hand it to her. Um, <clears throat> and so your characters won't know this, but it's it's going to be a recipe for a uh, um, an elven, uh, like, baked good type of thing. So I'm gonna see uh, if we have the ingredients to make that, and if she could, uh, if she knows how, or could figure out how to recreate such a treat. 
Okay, she, she looks at the paper and looks up at you and says, I've never tried to make anything this fancy, but I, I'll give it my best, Captain, I promise. I don't go over to the, um, to all the vendors that have, that sell food, and I'm like, we're stocking up, so we need this, 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 and this. Okay, um, um and Grant told me I'm going to lean over to Altair while all this is going on, and I'm going to go, you know what we ate in the ships on the war? Nothing. We're warforged. <laughs> I suppose that makes sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, fully for everything that she's written out and to last you a while uh, would be about 20 gold to have a fully okay. stocked kitchen that's pots, pans, herbs, and uh, various spices. yeah herbs, spices, and actual food ingredients to cook. With that. Because, you know, it's not like we can haggle. I mean, you could try. You successfully haggled with a fence. Yeah, that's because. I don't it's, know. it's a it's a pirate cove. Haggling is like a. If these guys aren't walking around with price guides going. I'm sorry, but uh, according to my haggling is just plate stealing. And stealing is everything that pirates do, so... <laughs> yeah, honestly, anybody you don't haggle with is probably going to be offended. And then set their prices <laughs> higher for the next person. I think burglary is polite stealing. It depends on whether or not you have to break and enter first. Because, I mean, that's pretty rude. I, think that's you know? I, I make sure that we get the best deals possible. So but I shooting. don't over haggle. Okay. Well, yeah, but then they're still gonna have to like pay to fix a window or like something, you know. For food supplies, you will say, yeah, you get extra <laughs> stuff. You'll be eating very well in the depths of space next time you guys leave port. There's a cat tail. Would like to go to the tavern, sneak in, find unnoticed, and then pickpocket someone. You're going to go into the tavern. Every tavern. And steal from people? Well, I don't personally see a problem with this. <laughs> no. Yeah, but you're <laughs> leaving exactly the party. What do. Oh, you're leaving the party wrong. and going to the tavern on the pirate asteroid to pickpocket someone. I'll go with her. Well, I mean, there's bound to be other pirates who, <laughs> you know, are skilled in, you know, detecting or being pickpockets. I really Seems a little worried. risky. But okay, everybody, really everybody calm. Them. Everybody stop. Nancy, is that what you were doing? Jax would like to do that. He'd find it a challenge and fun. Do what? Drax would find it fun. Okay. So Drax can leaves I, the party. Um, it depends right. on whether or not you notice Drax leaving. Yes. Uh, Drax, are you being stealthy in leaving? Oh, I'll tell the party where I'm going. Okay. I'm already stealthy going into the bar. Good luck, have fun, and uh, if you get in trouble, don't bring it back here. Give me a give me a perception check. Which one? Oh, that would be uh, Drax to give me a perception check to find someone to steal. If you want to follow him there, um, you can do that freely because he told everyone where he was going. Okay. Can I can I pay attention to who he's stealing from? Um. Yeah, you can. Um, so first, I would I'm like I would like to as subtly as possible just be near them. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the perception check from Drax is to spot anyone to steal from. And we'll go from there. So, Drax. Okay. Nancy? Yeah, she rolled in her dice tower. Hey. Yeah, I rolled an eight. Oh, plus four. oh plus that's four. cool. I like that. An eight plus what? Plus four. Plus four. So, 12. Oh. All right. Um, you don't see anyone particularly rich, but there's one... Um, there's one guy that looks like an easy target. He's uh, he's got 
a top hat, some weird um, goggles. He's very pale and skinny, and looks like he wouldn't put up much of a fight. And uh, now, give me a perception check, JK. That's not a disadvantage. Sorry. <laughs> um, so if you want to keep the fact that you're stealing hidden, you're going to have to roll uh, stealth from uh, from your crewmate and then roll a sleight of hand to steal from the uh, top-hatted dandy fellow. plus six for a stealth. Okay, uh, so JK, you walk into the tavern, and there are many uh, rough-looking elven men in this tavern. It's crazy how all elves sort of look the same to you. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna post up at the bar and just kind of sit, turn so that one arm is on the bar and the rest of the room is to my left and just wait and see if anything happens. Alright. So, sleight of hand? Yeah, I Oh, that's the same roll? No. Oh. That's a different one. I mean, that's a different, I mean, that's a different roll. I thought it was the same roll. No. Um, okay. 17 plus 6. Yep. Let me see what this guy is. Okay. Um, all right. You reach into a uh, jacket pocket that's hung over the back of a chair, and you pull out. Uh, you pull out a uh, small gemstone. Take it. I said you pull out a uh, a small gemstone. Yeah. Yep. I said I'll take it. Oh, you'll take it. All right. I feel like I should be reporting to the palace just to check in. Okay. The uh, the the pirate queen doesn't really care what happens in the general vicinity as long as nobody gets murdered. No, I know that. It's just that I'm. I'm you are. Remember. No, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. On my backstory. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. Split off from the party and go to the palace, if that's what you want me to do. Um, well, no, I feel like it would be, like, every time I come to port, you want me to check in. Okay. See how things are going. So we'll, we'll just say that you, you have your, your little meet and greet with the pirate queen. Ah, um, did I tell you what kind of, uh, Jim, that was. No, I don't think you said. You said it was small. Yeah, um, it, it's a small emerald. You turn to leave, and a hand reaches out and grabs your arm. The dandy fellow with the the goggles and the top hat uh, grabs your arm and says, "What is it you think you're taking from me?" Do I do I notice any of this yet? Uh, yeah, you would hear this scuffle. Okay, am I near them? Am I like within arm's reach of the guy? No, no, not at the bar, but you would see them across the um, the tavern. Okay, I want to move towards them. Okay, what did you say you were doing, Nancy? Tell him I don't know what you're talking about. All right, everybody, give me one second to set up this character sheet because I don't prepare things ahead of time like I should. So, uh, can you give me a wisdom saving throw? You know that. Oh, that's right, you're rolling on that. What is that? Ooh. Oh, is <laughs> you feel like it's safe to talk to this guy. He's not going to hurt you. <laughs> I 
But you, you think he's trustworthy. He's trustworthy. He's friendly. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Nothing yeah, about he's good. good. He's not going to be mad if you tried to steal from him as long as, you know, you can talk it out. Come to an arrangement. What is it all about? Can, uh... Uh, how far am I from out, Nancy's currently over. wielding um, scissors. You would be getting to uh, them right after the spell is cast. Okay. Can I walk up, like, sort of behind him and then just put my hand on his shoulder? Say, it would be Ill- ill-advised to mess with this one. I would like to meet them at the bar. Okay, it's going to be a while before you can get to the bar because you went to the palace. Um, stealth away in a crowd. Stealth away. You're going he's to try to stealth away in the crowd <laughs> while he's yep. holding your arm. I'm going to break free out of that. Do you have a smoke bomb too? All right, uh, strength or, or um, athletics or acrobatics check. Um... Uh, JK, he's not even acknowledging you right now. And also, he's at a table with um, three other... That is a nat 20. What's your modifier? (laughs) Uh, For athletics, it's plus five. Okay, yeah. You're going to uh, yank your arm away. Uh, He's going to say, Get them! And the other three... uh, People at the bar all stand up. When uh, when he when she pulls her arm away. Okay. Shocking grasp. Okay. Uh, you'll have to give me a moment. I did not have this battle map set up. I'm going <laughs> to have to. Can I grab coffee real quick? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Everybody take a, a mild recess while I set up the uh, completely unplanned map. Party people all around. Yes. Huh. Aye, aye. Ooh, is it that time? Yep. Sorry, I realized I medically required hot pockets. That's fine. I, uh... I medically required a whiskey sour. I can imagine wearing those glasses. <laughs> but when everybody is back, it will be time to roll initiative. Uh, <laughs> except, you know what? Clangy doesn't have to because Clangy, there's no way in hell Clangy will make it from the palace all the way across the damn asteroid in the amount right, of time this combat um, will take. If Altair was with, uh was with me, and I would have said uh, we probably would have started making our way from the black market back to the ship, and then probably while we were passing by where the tavern is located, I don't know, we heard a commotion or something? Yeah, I mean, I would, my character would most likely stick by the toughest looking person in our party, which is definitely the orc. Mm. Trying to play it cool, but he has no idea what he's doing. Amazingly, first in the initiative order would be the captain, who isn't even in the uh, tavern. Alright, so I mean, as of this moment, uh, people haven't really started fighting, so would I even be able to know that there is a... Uh, yeah, you would, have heard, really? um, you would have heard people gasping, it sounds like there's about to be a fight at the local tavern. Okay, then I will, uh... This could really be some good entertainment. Alright, well, um... Since I don't know who's involved, although actually, no, my crewmate did say that they were going to go there (laughs) and do some, uh, questionable pirate things, so... Um, you know... Not being too concerned, because I have faith in my crew, of course, but still being, you know, not wanting to miss out on the fun to be had. Um... You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make haste. So I'm going to uh let's see where's the door to this place? It would be Is it right, right here? here? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to um move and then uh, use my action to dash. 
So that's going to give me uh, 70 feet. So I can go... Okay, so I'm going to go there. All right. And so that uh, so 70 feet puts me right in front of the door. And then... Um, yeah. Uh... Oh, actually, wait, I can use my cunning action to dash. So let's say I did that. And then, I don't know, I'll just use my action, my normal action to, like, push open the door or something. I mean, opening um, the door would be a free action. Oh, okay. Um, then I guess so I can, uh, so yeah, I can move, take the dash action as a bonus action, open the door, and then, uh, take stock of the situation and, and, and see what's, uh, see what's happening, see what's going down, you okay. know. Uh, from your perspective right there, roll a perception check. Alright. Perception. Okay, uh, there's a lot of, of commotion happening here, but it all seems to be focused around the middle of the bar. The tavern. So you can't necessarily see what's happening, but you know where it's happening. Okay. Alright, um... Yeah, then I'm kind of just gonna, um... For now, at least. I guess I don't, like, throw the doors open. I kind of just, like open it, like, slowly and kind of, like, take a peek inside. I'm kind of yeah. just going to, like, hold back a little bit, not, like... Well, I, plus I don't have any movement left, so I can't really barge into the room. So I'm going to kind of just, like, stay, like, half-hidden behind, like, the door frame. I mean, you can um, action... Or you can move bonus action dash and action dash if you want. Oh, I could. You know what? I'm going to use my normal action and, um... To dash, yeah, but I'm not gonna make full use of that. I'm just gonna move a little bit. I see a bunch of pedestrians, so I'm gonna start like, uh, kind of like squeezing my way through like some of these pedestrian people. It's like, hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. It's kind of like, you know, they're all like. Um, They're very interested um, to see what's going to happen in the middle of the bar. When a fight breaks yeah. out in this tavern, people watch it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of just like sneaking behind all of the people that are clamoring around to watch the commotion. And uh, that's where, uh, that's where I'm going to await my next... Yes, where I'm going to await my next action. Alright. Uh, one of the... People, the one with a, uh, a thin rapier sitting beside the uh, old creepy man stands up and is going to take uh, tentatively tentatively attack you for a 16, um, JK. So, I take it... He was not surprised by me casting my spell, or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your spell would have gone off before this. Uh, so... The bald... The, um... Top hat guy would have definitely taken the... The damage of the shocking grasp. I think that just makes them unable to take reactions until their next turn, right? What, shocking grasp? Yeah. Does seven light? Well, it does a uh, one d eight lightning damage. Well, yeah, it does damage, and then it also prevents them from taking reactions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you could be right. Hang on. I hope I'm right. I was planning on making a character with that cantrip at some point. Uh, yes. Yep. Correct. Also, if they're wearing armor made of metal, you get advantage, which is awesome. It's like the fancy version of a stun gun. So, seven lightning. Alright. I'm setting that up. Yeah, you had to roll a uh, 21 to hit. So. Seven. Yeah, that would have hit regardless. Yeah. Yep. Alright. He's taking the lightning damage. And 
his uh, hireling person that's with him stands up and pokes a rapier at you. Uh, 16, does that hit? Yes. Alright. That is 9 piercing damage. Ooh. Bowsers. Yeah, I am down to three. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> and then, um. She is going to, uh. Attempt to grapple him. So. Strength versus strength. Because she's not really trying to grapple you, she's trying to. Push you to your knees. So just rolling pure strength? Yeah, pure strength. Athletics, if you want. Okay. Yeah. Would athletics add anything to that? Uh, Only if he has proficiency in it. Yeah. So, no, five. Uh, yeah. So, one slash and then grabs you by the shoulder and pushes you to your knees blade against your what would be your throat if you were a living thing and says I think you're gonna not want to do that uh, next is the other person with a bow who is going to slash it uh, Drax with a short sword after I do this. Uh, that's a natural one. And that is a 17. 17 hits? Yep. Okay. Uh, you take 8 piercing damage. And then it's JK telling guards, uh, uh, turn. Okay. Um, who are the two? Th this is the guy here that grabbed her, right? Yeah. Or grabbed Drax, right? Um, Who's the guy? That, three to attack. Hmm? Who's the guy that attacked me? That would be this lady here with a rapier. Okay. Question. Okay. Me... Range. Can I hit both of the up to two creatures within five feet? Can I hit both of them with that? With what? Uh, thunder wave. Oh, five feet. Yeah, it would hit both of them, and it would hit at least two bystanders. Checking my alignment. Yeah, I'm good. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> can I cast? I can't cast this at level two, can I? Is it a. Uh, what, do you have second level spell slots? I do. Uh, wait, no. Do I? I don't think so. I is do. It? Oh, no, I don't. Damn it. <laughs> no, I only have three. Okay. That is. Hello. Okay. Uh, constitution save? Um, Ian, that's actually a uh, 15 foot cube. Oh. Not 5 feet. Yeah, I don't know why under the, when you open it, it says it's a 5 foot. Two Each creature, creature in a 15 foot cube. So, essentially, or originating from you, it would be 5 feet on either side. So, effectively, it covers... If I were to draw that out for you, <laughs> this is uh, uh, quite a bit. Yeah, let's. Uh, hey, shit. Can I roll that back? No, does that mean it's no? Does that mean it's fifteen? Okay, never mind. It's fifteen on a side, Correct. so it's yeah. So it's not it's not a fifteen foot radius. It's a fifteen foot cube. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's still the same too. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. 
Okay. All good. All good. <laughs> I doubt that the bystanders are going to um make it. <laughs> Ooh, there's a storm outside. I hear thunder and lightning. Yeah, that's an eight for the bystanders. Thirteen. Uh, so both of them die immediately. Oh my! Wait, really? From five thunder damage? They are commoners. They have four HP. Oh my fun goodness! Fact, fun fact: That's the stat block your cook uses. Oh no, better not fart in front of her. Um, if you stand around watching death rates, you know what happens. Yes. Okay, so... He, he makes it with a 23. Um, and I haven't rolled for the other person yet. Yeah, stabby McStabby fan. Uh, that's an eight. So you push. How far back? Uh, ten feet away. So I think uh, I think the bystanders also, since they failed, you know, I mean, now they're limp bodies, but those would still get flung at. Yeah, you they're, know. They're on the table. Oh, they would get flung ten feet, which would mean they would crash into the other two bystanders. And he takes <laughs> they're in line with them. <laughs> two thunder damage. All right, so yeah, is that your turn? That ends my turn. Brilliant. All right, Drex. Very nicely done. Wait, did uh, I'll tell you your roll? Yeah, I'll tell you yours next. The bonus action to use my hunter's mark on this guy. Okay. And then I'm going to do a attack with my short sword. Alright. Remember, I can't watch your camera all the time, so you have to tell me what you roll. Ten. Okay. Ten total. Ten total to hit? Yeah, that does not hit. That's all I can do. Alright. So, all that here. Yep. Uh, hearing all the commotion and seeing uh, Anna just bolts ahead. <laughs> While he's left in the dust, he's just gonna make it that far. Uh, then he's gonna dash and uh, he's gonna open the door, hop in here, and be like, What the? And uh, he's gonna see. Uh, would he have seen the Thunder Wave go off? Uh, you would have definitely seen the uh, entire bar shake from it. Does he see, like, the dead bodies just on the table? Yes, you would and, definitely like, see, especially this one. Yeah, and does he, like, see, like, the scorched area in the middle of the floor? Like, it's not so much scorched, it's just sound waves that push them out. It's very clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there would be probably nothing on the table, and probably the chairs would be tipped over, too, because anything that's not secured in the uh, area of yeah, effect... The, the epicenter um, would be obvious. Yeah, he's also pushed 10 feet away. This is all on oh. a map that I didn't make. This was made by the very talented Mr. Valor. And I can't actually move the individual pieces. But yes, everything around um, JK would be not near JK anymore. Yes, and the spell emits a thunderous boom audible out to 300 feet. So <laughs> you would have heard something. <laughs> you heard it. Yeah. And where it came from would be pretty obvious. <laughs> In fact, the uh, the goblin at the counter, Mr. Yo, would have shouted, Kill each other all you want, but leave my establishment out of this. <laughs> Keep the noise down over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, to kill each other quick. Altair is going to be like, Hey, back away from my friend. And he's gonna shoot uh, this person over here with his uh, ray of frost. Didn't you use your action to dash? 
Yeah, I did. So he's going to, you know, hope he did that, but he's so out of breath he can't. Uh, <laughs> Damn. I'm coming over there in a minute. Okay. Damn you. No, no treadmills on the ship, you know. He's yeah. just not used to this level of excitement, you know, this high octane energy. Okay. How many hit points do you does JK and Drax have? Three. Three? Alright, you fall asleep, Drax? Sorry, uh, she has eight. I muted. Eight. Okay, so... I just kind of drowsily fall to... I was winning. <laughs> yeah. Um, everyone at this table falls asleep. And then... Wait a second, can Warforge be put to sleep? Oh, can oh, Warforge be put to sleep? Can they? I've never played one. Because so. I know they don't have to like fully fall asleep when they take an intentional rest. Like they become immobile, but they retain all of their senses. It's uh, one of their features called Sentry's Rest. So they're fully aware. They just kind of like go into like a like a power down state. So I don't know if you can actually put them to sleep. I'm looking it up on uh, Wiki. Guys, my battery's low and it's getting dark. <laughs> Lights no. fading. Okay, it's so that you don't have to sleep, but that you, uh... Oh. You don't need to sleep and magic can't put you to sleep. Alright, you can't go to sleep. So huh. in that case, Drax does fall asleep after all that. I don't have insomnia, it's a feature. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's Not intentional. <laughs> Alright, Drax is asleep. JK is nuts. Who's next? And, uh... He's going to... Try to... Actually, no, he's not gonna move. He's, he's just fine where he is. Uh, and then the big motherfuckers turn. There is a. You would think it's an orc, but it's much bigger than your average orc. It stands up, and um, it's going to hurl a j its javelin at uh, JK. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. That is a 14 to hit. That hits. Damn it, I stayed <laughs> awake for this? Be, what's your max HP? 12. You're fine. Uh, I mean, you're unconscious, but you're fine. <laughs> oh, rings. Hmm? Huh? It just all of a sudden started downpouring outside. Yeah, yeah the, oh, it's been raining and uh, thundering over here as well. Poetic, I guess. It starts raining where you are when your character drops to zero. Right. All around me, guys. I'm, I'm gonna take a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> Again. You're just going into battery saver mode. Okay, so I have poor decision making skills. <laughs> <laughs> Anastriana, you arrive to a spot where uh, one of your party members has fallen asleep and the other one has just fallen unconscious. Yeah, cool. Alright, you know what? Seeing that my crew is uh, severely outgunned and uh, the fact that my addition is probably not going to change the situation, um, I'm going to do the captainly thing and try to defuse the... Uh, Whole ker kerfuffle. Are they also outmanned? Outnumbered and outplanned. Yes. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna shove by this uh, lovely 
um, plain-faced pedestrian and say, uh, what is the meaning of this? Um, okay, roll a, uh, persuasion check. Okay. Um, you'll see how well that did when it gets time to. Um, it does seem for now that, uh, they're not making any actual attacks. Uh, JK, roll a death saving throw. Uh, how does that do that again? Uh. Oh my god. Oh, why? Why are you so bad at this? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to do the three of three of three thing? But I am not dead. <laughs> no. Uh, no, that gives you that gives you one failure. So mark down, mark down one failure. You don't have to roll anymore. You don't have to roll no, anymore. I, I know I didn't mean to click there. Okay. Don't. Drax, don't do that. Sleep. Altair, what are you doing? All right. Altair is just kind of like freaking out at the moment. He's he has no idea what to do. Uh, I'll be right back. I made a slight spill. All right. Uh. But Altair sees uh, JK go down and uh, the captain. So he's just going to do his... He's not really very smart. So he's just going to come over here and like get into the situation. He's he's freaking out, but he doesn't realize what danger he's in. Uh, and he's going to be like, oh, 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 uh, uh, I am not trained in this. I, uh, medic! I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. God, your your decision making skills are terrible. He's just gonna be like, "Is anyone out there that, that can help? Like this guy? He's dying. Hello? Does anyone care?" <laughs> okay. I don't think guys. I don't think they care. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Top Hat looks at you and says, "Actually, there is something." Um. Well, no. He says. This one stole from me. And this one attacked me. <clears throat> Entirely inexcusable. I'm sorry. I should have better educated my crew on uh, proper etiquette between thieves. Um, you know. To point out that I am not a thief. As things uh, go. I, I'm just here. I'm not. I Shh. Just... Shh. Um, whatever damages my, uh, my friends may have caused. I'm sure we can come to an amicable agreement and, uh, you know, just, you know, not cause any, uh, not cause any more bloodshed that we might regret. Okay, um, he says, follow me, let's talk, uh, get him up. Give me one moment, I, uh, pull out my, uh, uh, healer's kit, my, my first aid kit, if you will, and, uh, I don't know, uh, he's a Warforged, he doesn't really use bandages. I don't know, I pull out some fantasy defibs and I just go... Pfft. Okay, you are, um, well, you gotta roll medicine check? Uh, no, healer's kit lets me circumvent, um, okay. medicine checks. So I just stabilize him at zero hit points, um, but he does not have to continue making death saves. Alright. So. Drax And then, uh... Drax is still asleep, um... um Oh, Drax is still asleep. So while I'm, uh, so, um, Altair, pick him up, follow me, what? and then pick as I'm, uh, pick up this guy, the drag him, uh, just, just drag him. Uh, uh, you know what? You know what? Fine. I, you grab one roll, arm, I'll grab the other. Can I roll strength for this just to see how well he does, because I imagine he's going to fail miserably. You know what? Yes, I want to see it. <laughs> All right. What well, should I roll? Athletics. Yeah, All right, Ben. We're each we're each gonna grab one arm. So I have a minus three. Athletics I have a minus. Advantage. I have a minus one to strength as well. Um, All right. Should we both roll? Uh, one of you can roll with advantage, or both of you I'll, can roll. I'll roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're just gonna roll with advantage. All right. Hey. hey! <laughs> Natural twenty for a seventeen. <laughs> I love it. 
you know what? People's chronic you just get a massive surge of, of adrenaline, and it's just enough to be able to move this Warforged as if any other normal strength person would. All right, and as we're uh, as we're following Mr. Top Hat while uh, while dragging our Warforged companion, um, as we pass by Drax, I kind of just I kind of just like kick him in the side as we walk past and say, "Get your ass up." <laughs> okay, so uh, Drax is awake. We're out of initiative for now. Am I conscious yet? I'm awake. Um, I will. Well, now we're out of initiative, and there, he's going to lead you. Okay, so. Um, well, you're Warforged. He's he says. What? Oh, you're at three hit points now, J.K. Yeah, you'd be awake again. J.K. Tell Did me. Did I win? Um, I suppose if you're if you were making your way toward the ship, you would see uh, them leaving the tavern. With a creepy thin man in a top hat, uh, two women, and a large orc. Ah, yeah. Um, what's that thing happening? Hmm. Our uh, our gunner had a brilliant plan, and it went brilliantly. So uh, let's see if we can resolve this without any more uh brilliance. I think I think we had a really good plan there, guys. Well, is this is this, is this how pirates? So, uh, just just wanted to ask: Is this normally how how pirate plans go? I'll, I'll I just play it. I'll play it. okay. Save it, save it for later. All right, he um he leads you guys to his his own personal abode. It's uh. It would be just on the outside of the fall where you make court. He says, please, come in. We'll have a civil conversation. Ah, yeah, civil. I like that. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Much preferred to... It depends on the person, but most of the time, it much, much better than stabbing each other. We got off on the wrong foot, I suppose. Um, my name is Mr. Mormil. Captain Anna, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Clangy is trying very hard not to you know, comment or act well, like a cat. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to embarrass the captain. And uh, this is uh, this is Clangy, our wonderful mechanic. Yes. Does a great job. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. He, he sits down on a, a very large and extremely large armchair for someone of his size. And there's a glass table in front of it and chairs around the other side that he beckons for you all to sit in. All right. As we're going to take a seat, I, uh, I lean over to uh, Clangy and I whisper, um, I think you might be compensating for something. <laughs> Captain, I'm trying to behave. He says. Sorry, was, that, was that too quiet? No. Did everyone no. hear me? I heard you. Yeah. Did okay. Everybody hear me. I actually, I, I don't think I caught what you said. Captain, well, I'm trying to behave here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Course. Of course. Okay. So, Monil spreads his hands out and says. This is an awkward mess that we've gotten ourselves into. Hey, I quite I would, agree. I would be willing to overlook the entire thing if you lot could do me a small favor. What kind of favor? Some people have different definitions of small, <laughs> so I'm going to need you to elaborate further. He says... You've heard these talks of uh, the new dragon negotiations with the council. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, the lizards who think they're uh, 
so great trying to weasel their way into our politics. Yes. As part of, as part of this deal... Lizards? Dragons. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, no, I knew that. Lizards. <laughs> as part of this deal, they have come together and through elven uh, druidic magic and dragon-born blood created a new race of dragon-like creatures that the dragonborn are offering to the council in exchange for loosening the restrictions of travel. I want you to bring one of these new dragons back to me. Muggling, eh? I can't say I've ever dealt with live ones before, but... <laughs> Unless my crew has any oppositions. There is a... Uh... Oh, I think that sounds like a good idea. For the record, I am a warforged. I was just forged by people who didn't know what they were doing. Noted. He says... Um... I uh, was not forged. I am a human, uh, but I also don't know what I'm doing. Smuggling is a perfectly acceptable practice in the pirate circles. Just believe me, okay? Everything's fine. Great. Got it. Good. <laughs> he um, <laughs> he informs you all that there's a train scheduled to leave from uh, the, the main space station and uh, make the rounds among the primary planets of the council races uh, that would be pirated or er, pirated piloted mostly by kobolds and uh should be transporting what he's seeking yeah you know what i think we can handle it crew what do you say well i'm no good against pirates i'm not very good against rope i guess we'll see how kobolds go <laughs> you know i think we're gonna get them all just great jk go where the ship goes, so yes. Sounds like fair, we have a deal. To be fair, you guys picked a fight that that you would have difficulty with at the level I intended you to fight it at. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, definitely not level two. Right. Also, probably also adjusted for our party's Tendency to be completely overheated everything. I little, little room not, back about that. No, I, I started actually started nerfing some of my encounters based on what happened to you in the initial test session. This parties that yeah. were I got slightly imbalanced ever. But you guys made a stupid decision, and I had to let it stand. Did he roll to like see the stealth of twenty three? Yeah. Little known oh, fact about Warforged at level two, that's that's right where they give them the symbols to bang together. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um so you guys agree to this uh train job? Yes. yes. Space train robbery. Yes. Also, I don't know how you people wear glasses with, like, a headset, because it is, like, hurting my head. So I'm going to have to take these off. Yeah, it, it does things to your skull. Yeah, it's <sighs> oh, I'm so glad it is optional for me. So, like, after a while, you just get these little indents inside of your head. It's oh, that sounds <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so, it doesn't hurt In the interest of moving things along, I'm going to skip us straight to this map. Assuming you guys are setting up an ambush for the train instead of chasing it. Yeah, that's usually how these things go, right? Yeah. I mean, g given the events so far, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's going to go <laughs> splendidly. <laughs> I think we should yeah. park the ship in front of it sideways. It'll totally stop. <laughs> Yeah. 
All right. Um, I guess roll initiative for the ship. Uh, helmsman, why don't ya? Oh, ah, yes. Ah. You are the one flying it. <laughs> That's just true. That's not what I was... Whatever. How does I do that? Um, you go okay. into the, uh, journal. Yeah. And you click on the independence, because that that's our ship. Alright, and then there should be a spot where it says initiative. Ah. Brilliant. Alright, so... Wait, no. Oop. No. How come one of the ships is, like, really squashed? It's the lead car, Ben. It's it, it's so a space to train. Cover, uh, just to cover our bases here, if I die, can can I just roll up a uh, an equal level character to replace the pilot? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would say not immediately because we'd have to, you know, um, go to a new place to recruit another crew member, and then that'd be awful. One does not simply replace a crew member. There's a standard morning time. Okay, now. <laughs> okay, uh, no, that one's 18. This one's 14. <clears throat> hey, why didn't it do the thing? There we go. Oh. Okay, uh... I, I and in go. case anybody is wondering what I'm doing, I'm attempting to make myself a long, um, um... What is it called? A cardigan yeah. shawl thing? Very long cardigan. Okay. To make it easier, I'm just moving your ship instead of the train. But, alright, in the first round, it moves that far forward. Independence. What is everyone doing for the independence? How much of an ambush is it, really? I mean, we're kind of in plain view. I mean, you're in space. The, it doesn't have a choice but to keep going forward. Okay, that's fair. Um, I think I'm going to... Well, oh, I'm helping him out the ballista. Okay. I'm going to prepare the ballista. Alright, are you going... You're preparing a... Harpoon or a bolt? A harpoon. Alright. Um, I'm going to do the spyglass. Okay. Um, I forget, do you have to roll anything for that? Uh, well, I need to say what I'm actually spyglassing for, and then you get to choose if there's a roll before or not. Okay. I get to ask things like ship size and tonnage, number of crew, stations assigned on board, flags or markings, uh, okay. current hull. For now, I'm going to lend him a hand, and that will allow him to get two pieces of information. All right. So, so what, what two pieces of information would you like to know about the space train? Okay. Um. Her no ship weapons. And I guess number of crew, uh, stations aside assigned on board. Okay. Um, there is a heavy ballista on the uh, the main engine. Um, as far as stations, there's a few cobalts running about the the engine area. But mostly you've got two on the ballista and one just making sure that the uh, train keeps going forward. Uh, I'd be like, Captain, they appear to have a, a big gun. Like a really, really big gun. I don't think we know what guns are. It, it would be a really, really big crossbow. Okay, which, is, which is exactly what we have on our ship. Yes. <laughs> oh. No, but like bigger than ours. Well, you said theirs is a heavy, right? I'm yeah. pretty sure ours is also a heavy. So yeah, it's uh, a heavy. about the same. 
Ours is also heavy. <laughs> Sir, they also seem to have a crossbow, and it's exactly the same as ours. <laughs> it was made by the same manufacturer. Right. I can right. see on the side. Helmsman, are you moving? Milwaukee. I, I am going to slowly match speed so that we can control like how close we want to get. Okay, so you'll and essentially. I'm thinking we should like honestly. To me, at some point. We want to end up like here, so, so that we can come onto the train from the rear and move forward. So you're you're moving forward, but not. I mean, I'm not the tactician, but you're moving forward, but not your full movement. Yeah, just enough to keep like to lose maybe one one hex per round. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't know how many how many hexes did they move? They per moved round. four per round. And we can move up to up to four. Okay. However, so, they cannot yeah. they cannot turn or anything. They are on a stand or a course, and they can only speed up or slow down. Right. So I'm going to you know every time they take four hexes forward, I'll take three hexes, so that I fall back one hex each. Okay. Until we're like totally ready. Yeah, no, that sounds fair to me. I think that's a good idea. The next round, we should be ready to attack. Yeah. All right. So, their turn. You guys move back. Four. And you're still not in their attack range. All right, Independence's turn again. Instead of the Spyglass this time, I'm going to do Train Aim. All right. The next attack that hits uh, will be a crit on a roll of 19 or 20. All right. Oh, we have a cook now, don't we? Oh, yeah, you do. What would uh, you like your cook to do? Uh, let's see. Mm. Let's, uh, let's have some fortunate cookies. All right. And I will use my lend a hand so that, um, uh, no, I think right now we want the fortunate cookies. <laughs> it ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't. So I'm gonna use lend a hand so that we can uh, serve that meal in uh, one ship action instead of two. Okay. So that's uh, the cook and the magic officer. Uh, Helmsman's moving back one space. Uh, Clangy and Drax and the captain. Oh, you're using Linda, Linda Hand. Yeah, with the cook. Yeah. So, uh, Gunner can't really do much, can you? Technically in range. But I, I think. Alright. Yeah, so if it takes three individual actions to load the crossbow, and Clangy's been helping for the second turn in a row, then that would be a cumulative four, uh, four yeah, so it, it would, man actions. Yeah, it would be ready to fire. I don't know if we're close enough, are we? I mean, the green, the green is your crossbow, or your uh, ballista range. Well, 
Well, I'd say, if anything, we'd probably want to aim directly for their ballista. And our green circle only really intersects with the nose of their yeah, we ship. Yeah, at least... One more round. One more round. Yeah. Alright. Before we fire a bomb. Um... You know what, it's going to, it, it has no idea that you guys are, actually, let me roll, let me have the actual captain, or engineer roll for it. The kobolds are like, they're definitely going to attack us. That ship is legendary. Well, except for the helmsman. He's a bit of a... <laughs> okay, no, the, the kobolds have no idea of your intentions. So they just keep on trucking by. Your turn. All right. I'm going to drop us back into that slot. Drop okay. Them. Um, could, let's see, so we're looking for a way onto the ship, correct? Well, we're gonna try and board it from somewhere in the rear. Um, right. um can Altair, with his spyglass, buy out a spot to enter the vessel? Mm, roll me a perception check. Not great, please. Don't forget, entering the vessel is not necessary. True. Okay, um... Most of the train cars in the, uh... front engine are not, uh... actually covered by much. It's... They've all got their own local gravity, so they don't have to worry about, you know, flying off midstream. They're just sort of platforms moving along. It'd be fairly easy to board any of them. Okay. All right. Um, as the the captain, you know, we'll uh, we'll imagine it this way. I was with the magic officer while he was spying on them to find a good weak spot. I'm gonna go and relay that information and lend a hand to our gunner um, to uh, grant them advantage on um, the attack roll. Also, the oh, uh, train aim still is under effect. Yes. Because, yep. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I'm kind of like trying to like tie that all in together. You that trained your aim to find the weak spot of the thing, and I'm relaying that information while lending a hand, kind of like I don't know, just like scenario-wise. Yeah, it, it, it I think it, it's it's all happening simultaneously. Uh, but yes, you may you are within range of pretty much any car on the train now. It's an 11 and a what? That's a six, so would a 17 hit? Uh, yeah. Most ships don't actually have that much AC. Well, so our ship, the Ballista, has its separate um, AC. Is that the same case with this one? Oh, or... yes, it is. Uh, so, yeah, I still are you think aiming a seven. for the Ballista or the... Or a spot? Wait. Yeah, are we... Well, well if I anyone mean... else... If anyone else has, like, different ideas, then... I just um, I just think we should consider that if we fire at their ballista, we're kind of tipping our hand. Whereas if we can sneak onto one of the rear cars and work our way forward, not only can we shop a little before we're even, you know, in trouble. Okay, so I, you're going to shoot uh, the that's, car That's just a good question. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if Altair is hearing, uh, JK suggesting this, he'd be like, uh, I, I don't really have much of an educated opinion, but, the, I mean, the, that sounds like a pirate thing, what JK's saying. 
<laughs> you know what, actually? Yeah, you know what, I dig that. Um... You know what, JK and Drax stay on the ship so that we can, you know, because if you don't stay on the ship, um, then it'll fall behind. Right? I so mean, you wanna... Once you guys have boarded, we'll swing in, uh, the ship behind the train. They're not going to fire their ballista down their own train to hit us. Ah, uh, brilliant. Yeah, so I mean, um, I would say since we already have the ballista loaded, if we're holding off on firing it, um, then we probably want one person to stay behind to man the ballista and another person to actually fly the ship so that it keeps pace with the train. And then the rest of us would board the train and. I mean, to be fair, people... your, your ship would probably just become another train car at that point. Yeah. Oh, is there like just like a magical tethering sort of function? Yeah, I mean, we I mean, would fire the harpoon at it. Yeah, the harpoon would be the tethering. Oh, function. okay. Oh, so you mean if we fired it at the back of their uh, train, they probably wouldn't notice it. Okay, well, I mean, in that case, we could just harpoon it to the back of their train, and then all of us could board at the same time. Yep. We have to wait. I think we'll have to wait until we're further back. Otherwise, they could discover us, you know. I mean, if yeah. we're far enough back that they, that, that they may not see us fire the harpoon at the last car. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, helmsman, cut speed. Let's try and drop in behind him. You got it. Alright, so, no movement at all. We get you there. And then... I think that's working. Yeah. So, are you firing now, or waiting till they move again? I'd wait until they moved. Yeah, that way we can be right behind them. And they don't know. Yeah, so I would... Yeah. I have to move these each individually or else it won't be centered. Okay. And their turn, being the clueless kobolds that they are. That's all they do. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'd probably want to... Yeah, that would be as far as you could get. Yep. So... So we'd probably want to do that, yeah, and then... Fire our... Um... Okay. Our pool right there at the back. Okay. And taking that 17, you definitely hit. Um, give me just a minute. I think we'd probably want to reel our ship a little bit closer, you know. Yeah. Um. So, uh. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, we don't have to be in initiative anymore. It is not hard from this point to, uh. manage anything. You would be able to reel your ship closer and board from the rear. Which is mostly what the point of this, uh, exercise was. To see where you yeah. guys uh, boarded. I want to slowly come up to the rear and as we roll the, the rope in so that we don't jerk the train. Okay. Alright, so everyone can put their tokens on this car. Not that they would notice in the yeah. artificial gravity, but they may notice the linkages, you know. Yeah. Anywhere along this thing. 
Am I joining or staying on the ship in case I need to break? Like, we may need to break away and offer support. I don't know. That's your call. Captain. Well, in order to offer really meaningful support, we need two people to stay behind so that one person can man the gun, um, um, the yeah. ballista, while you uh, while you pilot the ship. And I think we'd prefer the uh, hands-on-deck um, approach more. So fair enough. Alrighty. I mean, more more crew on board should reduce the the chances of things going wrong, right? Maybe. Well, yeah, it just also means if things go to shit, uh, you're all dead. Automatically. I mean, we have two people. There is no plan B. No. Plan A is succeed. Plan B is succeed. Plan C is succeed. Plan D is succeed. Plan E is succeed. And plan F is uh, complete failure. Because we we should always remember, failure is always... Like initiative. I think, all right. right? Uh, so, are two of you staying behind, or are you all coming? No. All five of Captain. us are boarding. Yeah. Captain said all with hands. no train tickets. Okay. Uh, now Punch you... this! Oh, wait, no, no, no! I didn't mean that. All right, now it's time to start rolling initiative again individually. Ooh, I'll tell you here with the natural twenty. So we're starting. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Altair is going to try his very best. I, I, can he get straight up here? If he like were to just hop. No one can see that arrow. Oh. Um, you would have to roll an acrobatics or athletics check to climb that. Right. All right. That, that's that railing I... is above your head. All right, acrobatics. Here we go. 19, all right, yeah, you uh, run up, sort of do a jump, grab, and pull yourself up easily. Nice. All right, so Altair is now here, and he's going to fire his crossbow, which has a range of 80 feet. Um, is 80 feet uh, the short range or the long range? Short. Okay. So it's within that, so no, no disadvantage. Um, and I don't know which one is the smaller one. I'm going to assume it's this guy. How come I can't ping? Oh, I'm on the wrong tool. Yeah, I'm going to fire at this guy. Okay. The more well-armored of them? No, I'll fire at the less armored one. Okay. <laughs> he would be able to see that, I assume, if he's aiming a crossbow at them. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I'll be firing at this this guy who looks angrier, but is not somehow. Um, Fifteen. Okay, that. So to clarify, that's at this one. Yes. Or this. Okay, the little guy that does hits. Ha! Ah, the little guy has a bigger head. Um, and it doesn't really matter that much. Because you shoot the crossbow straight through his nostril and out the back of his head. <laughs> <laughs> the other one looks up and goes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> It just got all saving Private Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, that's I'll take your turn. Alright. Clanky. He's like, what? Oh my god. Give me He's like, oh shit, I am good at this. <laughs> <laughs> they were playing cards, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> I think that's a flush. The other yeah. guy the other guy rakes the table and goes to run around the bottom of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so clingy. I don't run. Well, yeah. Keep my movement to go to there. Um, 
60 feet. Uh, yeah, they're not in range of your pistol. I mean, yeah, you can't even hit them at disadvantage with that. They're just out of range. And this is why I'm just like one of us. So, I don't shoot. I'm just going to waste my turn. Wait, hold on. Well, I'll tell you, you're just gonna like look over at Clangy and he's like, I did something cool! Wasn't that awesome? Did you see what I did? It was cool, right? Yes, yes. Um. Right in the nostril, by George. Range 60 feet. <laughs> They're 70. The only one left alive is 75 feet from you. Damn it. Alright, I can't do anything. I just, you know, look at, at Altair and I'm like, Yes, he did very well. Super proud of you. Alright, Captain. Alrighty. I would like to. Let's see how far is this? Okay, so I can move up to there with my normal movement. As I pass by Altair, I give what? him a pat on the shoulder and I say, "Nice job." Oh, uh, I should roll acrobatics to jump over the railing. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that. <laughs> um, <laughs> he gets over the top, and just kind of goes. <laughs> you get, you you get up there without an issue, but it takes okay, not without an issue completely, but. You, it takes you a little bit of, and this is as far as you can get with your movements. Okay. Yeah, okay. Then I use my cunning action to dash, and uh, <laughs> I move. Let's see. I can get uh, that far. Is that like some sort of bridge thing right there? Yeah, that would be like in the train cars, the the little connector thing. Okay. That would be them. All right. Okay, so I move there, and then as I pass by Altair, I put a hand on his shoulder and I say, Nice shot. Let me show you how it's done. Um, and then I uh, take out a dagger. And let's see, that's at 50 feet, so this is going to be with disadvantage. But let's see if Lady Luck is on my side today. Um, I'm going to... Fortunate cookie. Oh, yes, that is true. I have a fortunate cookie. Yep. So that allows me to add a 1d6. Um, Let me see how it's done. Rolls a 1. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so with disadvantage, I'm going to be throwing a dagger at this guy. And that is an 18. Yeah, that hits. All right. So uh, he takes um, 6 damage. Alright. And I did not need my fortunate cookie. Can you add that to the damage roll, too? Uh, I think it's just attacks, abilities, checks, it's a and saving throws. Roll. Yeah, attacks, abilities, checks, and saving throws. Okay. Alright, uh, yeah, you... He doesn't seem to react as strongly as the other one did to the pain, but you hit him. J.K. Tellingard. I'll tell you, it's like, wait, you could throw those? <laughs> Only if you're skilled. Okay. I'm gonna walk, uh... Well, I'm gonna walk over here. 25 feet. And then I'm gonna go over the railing and start walking along the side of the ship. Alright. Uh, how far around are you walking? I guess the rest of your movement? I thought I only had 30 feet. Oh, yeah, unless you dash. Then okay. it's another 30 feet as an action. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. I'll dash one to the side of the ship. Mm. Let's see, you can get... Still on the side. I want to slowly be making my way towards the bottom. 
So when I go, when I do my next movement, I'll probably put myself seemingly on the map, but rather than being on the deck of the ship, I would like to walk on the keel. Okay. All right. Uh... This cobalt is going to shout, Back up! And then run... Here. Ah, shit. We didn't kill him quick enough. I was gonna say, somebody's somebody's gotta kill the Jeebus out of this guy. He already had the chance to call for reinforcements. Yeah, but how far are those reinforcements? Well, that's true. We can definitely dispatch him before, uh... The nice thing is that they're gonna come to us in a nice, orderly fashion. <laughs> yes. As they do. <laughs> Probably about mid-train, we're going to have to consider standing our ground. <clears throat> Alright, um... That's about as far as he can get. Don't do anything in range. Oh, yeah. He's going to th chuck a spear at, uh... The captain. Right. Oops. That's a 22. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I think that hits. I did a thing. You know what? I'm not, I'm not even going to bother with uh, it. That's anyway. five piercing damage. All right. Good show. Yeah, that's the thing about spears. They really stick with you. Or yeah, into you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the quality of jokes, people. <laughs> I don't know if you see how my thousand yard stare is today. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> Alright, uh. Oh, Drax. Sorry, I had to reset my uh, stream because I accidentally got the chat in another window. I'm going to go up to here. Okay. Uh. Oh, you went up the stairs like a normal person? I want it to be cool! Same. I got time for a turn. Okay, so you're. Go past my hunter's mark. Okay. And shoot him with a longbow. In total. How much? I have a fortunate cookie. What does that do again? You get to add a 1d6 to the roll before Maddie says if it succeeds or fails. If you so choose. I'll say that's gonna fail, so I would... Yeah. So it's 4 plus what? 6. 4 plus Wait. 6? No, it's yeah. not 4 plus 6. Yes! Wait, you add a... Yeah? I rolled a 4. I got plus 6, Ben. Oh, so that's a 10 total. That's 10 plus, plus 2. two. Plus so for 12. 12, 12 to hit. So 12 does not hit. It was worth a shot. If it was like a yeah. six, it would have worked probably. Well, mm -hmm. that's my turn. <laughs> Alright, uh, back to Altair. Alright, um, Altair is going to continue his heroic stride. He's, he's somehow got a bloodlust now. Um, and he's going to come up here, and he's going to cast a Witch Bolt onto Ooh. this guy. Ooh. Which bolt? Yep. Cool. So that is uh, five. Why did it have to be five? It could have been twelve. <laughs> um, All right. but I have have that now, so that's cool. Um, and actually, it's thirty feet. So 
Uh, let's assume he was. You know what? No, for for roleplay's sake, we'll just say he, he moved up one because he's hasty. Um, okay. It's not me not playing optimally. It's just my character. <laughs> Whatever's most fun, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, at this point, two more normal cobalts emerge. I don't know if they have one. Yeah. Uh, they're going to start throwing daggers. Okay, they can hit two of you with range, but it's at disadvantage. So, this one's at the captain. Uh, 14. Uh, 14 just barely hit me, yeah. Alright, and... That's, uh... 6 piercing damage to the captain. And a... 7 for... Um... Me. Yeah. Misses. Okay. That's what disadvantage will get you. Clangy. Shooting this one? Yes. Uh, that does not hit. Uh, yeah. Wait, 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 I have... Fortunate cookie! Yeah. I think I messed up last campaign when I allowed you guys to make second attacks and bonus actions, considering yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a few classes that specifically say that they allow you to do that. It probably okay. means that you can't normally. Oh, I yeah, and for any I weapon... Have, um, I get a plus one bonus for 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the V6. Um... Yeah, you can add a D6 to the record. Okay. okay. Um, so if you want the uh, if you want to buy the rules um, for repeating weapon, and then you can decide whether or not to go buy that or do whatever. Repeating weapon actually just makes it so your weapon does not consume ammo; it creates its own. So weapon with the loading properly no property normally, um, if you had extra attack that lets you make two attacks with one action, if your weapon has the loading property, you can't actually make those two attacks because you'd have to load in between them, and that takes too long. So with repeating weapon, it allows you to make two consecutive attacks if you have the extra attack feature, but it doesn't make the weapon attack more than you could normally yes. attack otherwise. Right, 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 right. Um, so a 15 doesn't hit. Okay. Um. Anything else from you? Or just... Um, no. Very high. Okay. Well, no, you already used your action. Is it a bonus action or an action? I think it's full action. Yeah. Action. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's what I'm Alright. Uh, Captain. Alright. Well. I am severely damaged, but there is only one way to go, and that is forward. So. Oh, wait, wait, um, um. The only bonus action healing that I know of that you can have this early is healing word, and I don't think you have that. No, I have spared the dying. Yep. Don't worry. If I fall down, you'll pick me back up. I believe in you. Of course, Captain. <laughs> so, um. I am going to. Walk up to this nice chap and proceed to attempt to cut him down with my scimitar. Okay. 
Oh, and while I'm while I'm walking, you know, there's like a spear stuck in me. So while I'm walking towards him and, and drawing my my uh, scimitar, I kind of like rip the spear out and toss it to the side. And I right. take a swing at him. Hmm. If you leave it in, it doesn't leave this box. Yeah, but it's dragging me down. I can take it. Um, okay, so here comes that scimitar. And okay, I did not roll the fortunate cookie on my last attack, so I'm gonna roll that on this one. Wait, and uh, okay, hang on, hang on. Well, so you technically you're not supposed to do it until like unless the DM hasn't said if it succeeds or fails yet. But you already knew. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So, a 15 still it. just barely under. Alright. Okay. That lot of good that cookie did. <laughs> I was gonna be like, well, shit. Apparently, we used up all of our good luck in the last campaign. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Alright. Come to me. Yes. I am going to walk onto this piece here. Can I see over the railing to attack? Um, with a like with a spell. Yeah, if you use up all your movement to get there, yeah. 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 The uh, standing in front of the captain. All right. How many uh does that hit? Mm. Creates three darts at first level. Okay, so um, would you like to roll it two more times, or would you like me to take the five and multiply it by three? Um, whatever you decide I right now the, is how I'll I'm going to roll five. it for the rest of the campaign. Okay, so, I'm going to take the five and multiply it by three. Okay, so next time if you roll a one, it's going to be three damage. I understand. Okay. I will take that chance. I'm gonna all three at that at that. Game. At this one. Okay. Uh, he's looking pretty hurt now. Um, it being his turn, he's going to. Uh, well, he doesn't have a second spear. Um. So he's going to... Well, he does have a second spear, but it's his only other weapon. Um, he's going to attack twice at melee range with it. Uh, that's a 6 and a 22. Okay, so I'm taking the 22. Alright. That's uh, 2 piercing damage. Minimum damage roll. Yay! I'm still standing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I tried. Uh, I tried so hard. Drinks. I move up to here and attempt to attack him with my longbow gun. All right. Ooh. It is. Yeah, I don't think 11 hits. Uh, no. You guys are rolling so bad. I feel sorry for you. Yep. Like I said, we used up all of our luck last half a day. I mean, I considering how we're rolling, right we're absolutely. still doing okay. I mean, except for the captain. Yeah, it's just that last campaign, we destroyed absolutely everything. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Altair is going to uh, attack one of the small guys with his. Uh, oh, which bolt's only thirty feet? Dang it. Um, which bolt? Well, well plus Ben, you you had already started casting it on this guy, right? Um, yeah. 
which means I don't think you need to make another attack roll. I'm pretty sure you can just use your action to roll damage again, right. and yeah, it automatically that's, that's connects really unless it breaks the spell. spell. It's actually right. an amazingly underappreciated spell. I love Witch Bolt. Yeah, because once you've connected once, you don't need to keep re-rolling. You just need to maintain concentration, and you can keep doing damage. Yep, so we're going to do that with uh, this guy. Hopefully get a 12. Wait, why is it 2d12? Okay, I don't know why it rolled 2 on my end, but it's 1 in the chat. I think it's a glitch so, with yeah. the 3d dice. Yeah, 10. Okay, 10. Oh, ooh, he's real hurt. You said that the last time. I said he's looking pretty hurt. He's like, oof, now. He's single digits. Same, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Was I ever healed to full health? No, you would be at... I'm still at three. Yeah, going to the... Definitely, it would have taken you at least a long rest worthy of a trip to get to the uh, train. Okay. Sorry. Um, Alright, so that's your turn. <laughs> yep. You just tased the fuck out of the Cobalt Dragon Shield? Pretty much. Uh, I... Going all Darth Sidious on him. <laughs> Lucas, I was just about to say that. You stole it right out from under me. All right, uh, the other two. You dashed my dream dreams expertly, sir. <laughs> I'm gonna have them roll acrobatic checks. Um, one. No, that's pretty good. All right, yeah, they're both able to. Easily get here. Um, uh, oh, it's Lemus. Yeah. So they each fire or hurl a pebble, uh, one at Klingy and one at Altair. Um, I see 17. Okay, so they missed Klingy's. I'll tell you they rolled an 18. Yeah, that hit. Alright, that's three bludgeoning damage. Okay, everybody hold on. Woo! I'm Good thing they didn't aim at me. Huh? Good thing they didn't aim at me. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been uh, the deadliest pebble you ever seen. Oh yeah, I was going next. I could do something really cool. Wait. Uh, JK, you might be able to do something really cool. Yes. I was planning on attempting to do something really cool. Mm-hmm. Does it involve a wave? Thunder, it may. Perhaps? <laughs> it may involve nice. one wave made of thunder. I see a prime opportunity, and I also possess thunder wave. Though I lack the initiative. Wait. But you! You may be the chosen one! <laughs> Isn't there uh, a casualty in that case? Uh, uh, there would be... A... Oh, that's true, you would be sacrificing one of our own! <laughs> if, I'm, if I am not mistaken, is there not a mechanic, given that I am close enough, to shove him? Fire an action. But I he goes do it before you. He goes before you. Yeah, well, shoving is technically an option as to replace your normal attack. You can instead attempt to shove, which results in a strength contest between you and your target. Um, but... So that would normally require in action if you were doing it against an opponent. Really, you could I don't think do there's any specific that. rules for shoving allies. Surely you could just do this. Okay, yeah. so... Well, that's uh, kind of what I want to do, but I need to... I guess, can I yell without taking an action before his turn? No. Okay. Um, alright. No, uh, I was just waiting for you to get back so that I could use the footage. Um, 
So the kobolds. I, I told. I already said that they dealt three bludgeoning damage to uh, Altair, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Okay. You can always. Okay. Yeah. Now it is Clingy's turn. All right. Hmm. Um, I Nancy's mean, saying that they can always. Hmm? What? Nancy's what? Nothing. We're just metagamer. Oh. I cast Greets. Okay. On. Let's see, it's a 10 foot square. So. Here. Okay. And then I will move. It's a dexterity saving throw or the fall prone? Yep. yep. Uh, that's a five. And that's a natural <laughs> one. <laughs> dexterity is one of the only things these guys have a, bon a positive modifier in. <laughs> so, one of them, the one that rolls like, you know, a five or whatever, he falls on his butt. <laughs> the other one falls on his face. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What? Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, Captain. Alrighty. Um. Do it. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I can use sneak attack now that I have an ally within five feet of my target. So, let's uh, let's see if I can get a hit this time. So that's going to be a normal uh, scimitar attack against Mr. Big Guy. That does put you in the grease. And I don't think that it hits. It, it doesn't. 15. <laughs> it's just shy of hitting. There's a beefy kobold. Yep. Well, if he's armored, I'm assuming probably chainmail AC, which is 16. So it would make sense. Um, you're you're going to have to roll that saving throw in the grease. I'm not in the grease. I thought you walked around to attack. No. No, he's, he was right in front of me the entire time. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw an arrow. Sorry, no. I, yep. That was me. Ah. Yep. Um, so... Upon misting again, and um, not wanting to just like die, um, I'm going to use my cunning action to disengage. Good thinking. Um, and then I'm going to uh, tower behind the sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> Defend me, squire. <laughs> <laughs> Except I wouldn't really say that because you're not my squire. Um, I know, I'd love it if you did. <laughs> okay. JK? <laughs> oh, man. I feel like the optimal spot would be here. That's what I'm thinking, too. The grease yeah. and the fact there's casualties on our side. Yeah, and the way I roll. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're prone, so I think... Does that infer a disadvantage to um, dex saves? It would, but this is a con save, I think. Oh, for what? Thunder Wave? Is it really? Thunder, what, what kind of save is it for um, Thunder Wave? Well, it's dexterity. Grease is a dexterity. Yeah, yeah. Grease is, but, uh, but Thunder Wave. It's, it's a con. He's, he's thinking about walking up and casting Thunder Wave. Yes, it's a con save. So okay, so their prone they're, status they're has no effect. Mean, no. Well, the one guy's a kobold. All say three that, of them are kobolds. Can I just say that me and Ian had this, like, oh. thought out for, like, a long time, and everyone <laughs> yeah. else came and just fucked it up completely? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm the tank. I have to be up front. Oof. <laughs> Wait, you have the fortune cookie. You didn't no, say if it's no, a team no. or failed. <laughs> it, it, they have to make a saving throw. Yeah, there's oh, a, not an attack roll, Ben. It's a save. 
I'm stupid. That's just my character. I'm just being. I'm just role playing. <laughs> You're role playing. Yes. Nice save. Yeah, that's what it is. Literally everything except for dexterity has a negative modifier. On these guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, average intelligence. That okay, it's like so the uh, the two small ones each rolled a four. And the massive cobalt dragon shield, not massive, but like heavily armored, rolled a nine. I think the um, further um, small one is actually out of range. Oh, okay. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so he's okay. The other two... Drop dead. Uh, <laughs> well, they wouldn't really... Yeah, they flop dead, not drop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but... Yet, yeah, uh, you only have one, uh, cobalt left. I remembered that I was a magic user, guys. <laughs> Good job, JK. Okay, he did. Uh, so what, where Helmsman? You're doing a great job keeping me safe. I'm so sorry about my oh, actions, my... everyone. I... I'm really better. You're doing good. I keep you safe as long as you don't get too close to me. I'm just not attempting voice acting at all because I can't uh, imagine it would go well of me trying to, uh, um, me trying to sound like a woman. So, uh, you know, regardless of how good your accent is or is not, you know, it's still much better than me not attempting at all. Yeah, like I said, uh, resident trans woman, it's not easy. Yep. Uh, okay, it's Drax's turn. Nancy? My hand on the cap's shoulder and casting Cure Wounds. <laughs> oh, thank Finally. you so much. <laughs> point of healing. How much? Seven. Seven? Awesome. Yep. You are the best. And that is all I'm doing. Alright. Alright, so does the way Witch Bolt works is when your target just dies, your Witch Bolt goes away? It breaks It breaks the connection to the spell. Unless it says um, that you can move that you're target. able to... Unless it says you're able to select a new target, but it would probably... Um, it ends if the target is ever outside the spell's range. I mean, technically he's not out of range, he's just dead. But then there would the be no ends target. If you use your action to do anything else, the spell also ends if the target ever outside the spell's range or if it has total cover from you. So you can switch targets. Yeah, so I'm just gonna well, it assume... Doesn't, it doesn't say you can switch targets. It doesn't. Yeah, so I'll just assume... That and there are specific things like the Hexblade's Curse that says when your target dies, you can move it to a new target. This does not, so I'd assume it breaks the spell. Yeah, yeah. so... Dead, I mean, I gonna... think uh, the way I'm gonna rule it is you could keep shocking a corpse if you want. I don't know what the wisdom of that would be. Uh, he yeah, because technically they're still that. connected to you. <laughs> There's yeah. just no yeah. point yeah. to continue to the damage them. Let you still be connected to the cobalt that is dead. So you can <laughs> shock the corpse, or you could do I... your action, use your action to do anything else and break the spell. Well, he's not very wise, but he's not that. Dumb, so he's not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, so he's gonna attack this guy with his crossbow, hopefully. Okay. Fourteen and, definitely uh, hits. Yeah, that's five. That's exactly their HP. <laughs> ah! All right, that's the last of them. We're out of nice. initiative for this car. Well. Yeah, everybody roll me an investigation check. Yeah. Whoa! Okay. What'd you get? 18. Alright. Everybody except for the captain and the helmsman 
hear a rumbling coming from under here. Hmm. Okay. Dun dun dun. Bum bum bum. Inside you see a small wingless dragon. And when I say small, I mean like the size of a of like a bull mastiff, but still. I think this is our target. Make an animal handling check. Okay, you get a nip. Blurry dude, though, you are able to uh, get it to calm down enough. Okay, can I just kind of pick it up at a distance and, you know, stop doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, can I keep it? Please. Please? Um, I think this is what our client was requesting. We don't know Agreed. that, and you're not down yet. Actually, um, Drex, the dragon sniffs the air, and after you guys get it out of its cage, it makes its way over to Drax, and uh, you roll me an animal handling check specifically, just to see how this goes, but... Ooh. Nat 20! On the roll that is important. This Drake extends its nose to you uh, and just like, like sits down staring up at you. She it was it was fate I'm, decided I'm to this one actually. Do I? I'm going to pat its head. Okay. It actually yeah. nips you. Um your hand bleeds a little bit and the blood mixes in with some of the dragon's saliva and the wound closes immediately. You take no actual damage from it, but it breathes a sigh of respect out for you. I just kind of whisper to Altair, I'm like, uh, you know, we've got a long ride back to milk that thing. <laughs> what? It has udders? <laughs> I shake my head and lean back. <laughs> um, so, Drax, this is now your Drake companion. Yay! Of course, the downside is you're supposed to give it back to the creepy thin man, Monil. We are, but. Uh, well, they said a new species of dragon thing, so that it's not kobolds, it's not dragonborns, and it's not an actual dragon. So it's probably whatever this thing is, It's because it's a new dragon-like thing. It's a yeah, but, uh, no, it's, no it's, we, we must protect it. All right, and uh, no, will it... It's not going back with them. That's yes, where, but you see, yes. That's where Pirates are all about to see. Okay. Okay. Bye, everyone! To level three. By the way, Hooray. Hooray. sweet. Nice. And we'll see sweet. what decisions you make and how they affect you come next week. Okay. Alright. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the session. Have a good night. Good night.